quiz answer, a question that was asked last time that we said we didn't know the answer to. And that was, can a spouse add the a spouse over 50 go ahead and add the extra $1,000 to an individual retirement account? And yes, she can. So by now you figured out that uh, I'm Marcia Getting and I am the Extension Family Economics Specialist. And that means that I provide education in the area of financial management as well as estate planning. And we've got us a great team that has been working on our thoughtful Thursdays. You know, there's a lot that goes on in the background as well. And you've had a chance to hear from Emily. Uh, as you can tell, Emily is very smart when it comes to telling people how to use the computer and your uh, cell phone so that you can participate in our polls. So Emily hails from Lewistown. So if you're ever in that area, you'll have to look her up. Uh, another individual that's involved with our Thoughtful Thursdays is the Associate uh, Vice President of Development for Estate, Trust, and Gift Planning. And Kevin happens to be with the MSU Alumni Foundation. And our behind the scenes, a little bit shy person is Carrie Hayes. And Carrie Hayes is the one that has developed the website and all those materials that you see there that you can get additional background information. Uh, and that uh, also includes the recordings. We've had lots of people ask, are you recording? And the answer is yes. And well, where do I find those? So if you go to the Thoughtful Thursdays, you look on the left-hand side of the screen and what you'll find is the schedule, the resources, and then there's those past recordings. So take advantage of those and share if you'd like. Now this morning, we'd like to welcome, uh, we've had this many 181 folks register for our seminar series. And we've got 33 out of staters. And again, I look at Alaska and I go, now how many hours difference is there? Uh, are you up in the middle of the night or uh, really, really early? We have engagement tools for those of you that have participated in the past. And one of those is a question. It's a chance for us to learn what you're doing as a result of participating in our series. So Emily is going to pull that up. And if you didn't attend the session that we had last week on individual retirement accounts and how those can be a, a legacy planning tool, you simply say didn't attend. If you decided you needed to add money to your IRA, uh, indicate that. Did you calculate the amount of your required minimum distribution? And did you add a beneficiary designation to your IRA? Or how about changing one? Once you took a look, you saw, oh my goodness, that's too old. And did you share some of the information with family and friends? And if there's anything there that doesn't fit what you did, please feel free, enter that information in the chat room. We want to hear from you and what you're doing. Okay, Emily, you think we've got some responses here and see what people have done as a result of the series? Well, we've got, let's see, we have 19% um, that didn't attend the session. So yeah, you couldn't have done anything as a result. And we've got folks that pretty well shared the information uh, with other friends and relatives. So that's good to know. Okay, so don't forget that chat panel is a place for you to ask questions uh, and we appreciate those questions and we'll answer those at the end. We plan to remain in that WebEx room for 15 minutes or more if necessary, like we did last week because we had so many questions. The other third method that we're going to use to communicate is our steers head. And the steers head tells us about what our objectives are. And we really want to steer you to the idea that you can create a living legacy while you're saving income taxes at the same time. And we also want to share the idea that you can utilize a charitable gift annuity to help you achieve some of your estate planning goals. 
So that's what we have in mind for our time this morning. Now, I have a pinstamen here, and I've called them the singing pinstamens. And if you look at them, you see the two little eyes and then got the little mouth. Uh, these are great wildflowers. And we would have had some great music for you, but it just didn't quite work out. So I would sing if I could, but I can't. Uh, this is an example here of Champ, who is our MSU mascot, and he's with President Cruzado. And uh, even though they're marching down, what uh, Champ is telling her is that he's considering a donation to MSU. Well, Chris, President Crusado says, you know, what you got to do is talk to Kevin Brown with the MSU Alumni Foundation, Marsha Getting, and Emily Stanley with MSU Extension. So uh, Champ decided he would do that. Well, he happened to catch me at our uh, conference that we had at Big Sky several years ago. And when I say several years, it's just amazing to me that that was way back in 2016 when we had a national meeting at Big Sky. And this was for a National Association of Extension Family and Consumer Sciences. And we had people from Georgia that had never seen snow before. And we, we have arranged snow for them. Anyway, it was a great conference. And it was fun to meet Champ in real life. So Champ is considering this gift to the MSU Alumni Foundation. And believe it or not, he wants to benefit Montana State University Extension. You know, woohoo! Yay. <clears throat> I'm biased, of course. But I said, Champ, why are you interested in Extension? And he's saying, well, Extension is a part of the land grant mission. It's bringing the university to the people across Montana. And boy, that made me feel kind of good. And then uh, he also indicated he wanted to give some money for the benefit of the 4-H program in Montana. And of course, I said, well, why? And he said, well, I was in 4-H when I was just a little bobcat. Okay. So he wanted to ask me which estate planning guides that uh, he should read. And then he wanted to ask Emily then, where can he pick up those estate planning uh, guides that we do have? And then he just said, well, you know, President Cruzado said, go to uh, Kevin and ask some questions. So, Kevin, what is it that uh, Champ asked you about? Yeah, so Champ came and asked, should I make gifts while I'm alive or make bequests after my death? And, of course, I told Champ, well, it depends. And we talked about what our Champs, what were his legacy planning goals? And in Champ's case, he said he wants to contribute to MSU Extension and the Montana 4-H program. He also wants to avoid death taxes, as they're so affectionately called. <laughs> so things like Montana, Montana Inherent Tax and Federal Death State Tax, he wants to avoid those. Um, so we have another poll question for you, so hopefully you can get ready for that poll. Uh, so Champ has a home in Bozeman. He also has investments totaling over 5 million or totaling 5 million. So what percentage of inheritance tax will his heirs pay? So you can see we have several, several selections and we'll test how, how well all of us are up on uh, some of our inheritance tax. Um, so will he pay 35%? Will he pay 27%, 16% or man, could he be lucky enough and his heirs pay zero? percent um, on that. So that sounds almost too good to be true, but I don't want to give anything away. So. Well, yeah, and don't forget, folks, hit that submit button. Yes. It's way at the bottom of the of the uh, polls. And uh, I found when I was first participating, I would miss that one. Well, it looks like we got results already, Kevin. What are they? Yeah, we got we got some results coming in. We still have a few that that are no answers. So hopefully we can you can jump in and participate. Um, right now we have 33% that are saying they're taking the zero. Uh, we have about 13% that are saying 35, 17% that are saying the 27%. And, and we have about 3% that are saying the, the 16%. So, um, Marsha, I'll hand it off to you. So. Well, okay. And uh, we, we've got that. So let's see what happens. 
Well, I was delighted that I could tell Champ that your heirs aren't going to have to pay an inheritance tax. And that's what I found when I was doing programs pre-COVID, that people think that we have an inheritance tax in Montana. And you know what? We haven't had one since 2001. That means we've had 20 years of no inheritance taxes. So I'll take this one. Champ has a home in Bozeman, and he has these investments that we talked about that Kevin said $5 million. And what I want to know, will Champ have to pay a federal estate tax? So this one is very quick. It's just a yes answer or a no answer. So hit that and hit click and submit. Hopefully some people, if you've been watching the news, there's been a lot of a lot of discussion going on lately about our our federal estate tax. So you may, oh, have, may have caught hear. some of that information as of the last few days of what might be. Oh, okay, be so happening. Emily, what do we got here? What are people saying? Okay, so we've got, uh, ooh, 32% of you that think that CHAMP is going to pay a federal estate tax. And we have 42% that say no. And then we have you no answer people. So I know it may be, you just can't do it on your phone. And I understand that because I have challenges with my phone. So let's take a look at this. Ah, uh, I was able to tell Champ that he's not going to have to pay a federal estate tax unless its value exceeds the federal tax exclusion. Well, of course, he says, well, duh, Marcia, uh, what is the amount that you can have and not pay a federal estate tax? And I said, hold on to your seat, champ, because this year you can have $11,700,000 and not have to pay a federal estate tax. And if you take a look, wait, 20 years ago, the amount was six seventy-five. dollars So there were a lot more people that were subject, well, having to pay a federal estate tax. And today, believe it or not, you got married couples that can have $23,400 and not pay a federal estate tax. So that death tax that we've heard so much about is not what it used to be, okay? What else was going on there, Kevin, with uh, Champ and what he wanted to do? Yeah, so again, his goals uh, were to minimize his living taxes, so his Montana income tax and his federal income tax. He wanted to minimize or uh, not pay his, more than his fair share, as we say. Yeah, and that's admirable. We take a look at that. Um, you know, you don't have an inheritance tax. You don't have an estate tax. And you think, well, there's no reason to plan. Well, yes, there is, because there are ways that we can minimize these two taxes. Uh, Kevin, what else? Or maybe- I think this is Emily he asked, yeah. yeah. Oh, he asked Emily instead. Okay, well, yeah. what, what's going on here, Emily? So Champ was wondering what the federal and state income tax savings with a gift to the MSU Alumni Foundation would be for the benefit of MSU Extension and the Montana 4-H Foundation while he's still alive. So we explored that a little bit with Champ. One of the first things I asked is whether his donation was a cash gift or a planned gift. And Champ's response was sort of a smart aleck response. He says, well, what's the difference? Can't I plan to give cash? Ooh, I didn't know Champ could be that way. As funny as that was, I said, well, let's look at this, Champ. Are you going to take the standard deduction or itemize your deductions? For your 2021 income tax returns. And Champ wants to know, well, what's the amount of the standard deduction in 2021? He needs to know that before he can make his decision. So I mentioned that for a single person, it's $12,550. And for a married couple, it's just above $25,000. So Champ looks at those and realizes that he doesn't have enough deductions to itemize. So he's going to take the standard deduction. And looking at his income, he's received $18,900 this year for his appearances as Champ the Bobcat 
and his earnings in 2021 puts him in the Montana income tax bracket of 6.9%. So with his cash gift of $10,000 to MSU Alumni Foundation, what he ends up saving is that 0 0.069 tax rate. So $10,000 times 0 0.069 so I let Champ know that he can save $690 if he does a cash gift of $10,000 to the MSU Alumni Foundation. Wow, was he excited about that? He wasn't, actually. He said $690, is that really all I can save? And here's why. His friend, or maybe enemy, Monty the Grizz, told Champ about how he established a $10,000 deferred gift annuity for the University of Montana Foundation and saved more money than Champ did. So he's laughing at Champ now. So now he talks to Kevin. Sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, so then he came to me and he said, Kevin, what if I establish a deferred gift annuity? Could I save as much as Monty? And of course I said, yes, you can champ, because a deferred gift annuity is eligible for our Montana endowment tax credit that we have in Montana. So uh, a little history about Montana endowment tax credit. Uh, it was established or enacted in 1997 and has been renewed in the legislature about every six years it comes up for renewal and it has passed um, uh, very favorably through the legislature each time. Um, Marcia, I don't know if you want to talk a little more about the history, but it was really created um, to focus on helping improve endowments. And that is a key word on the Montana endowment tax credit in the state of Montana. So did you have? Yeah, I had heard. Uh, well, I was asking about the history of it, because when I first heard about this, I thought I just don't really understand how this works, because we don't have a lot of other states that uh, have it. Well, what I had uh, heard is that the governor at that time uh, pulled together a lot of leadership people in Montana, and they said, you know, there's got to be a reason uh, why we do not have a high rate of charitable giving in our state. You know, it's kind of embarrassing to be kind of at the bottom there. And so these folks came up with this idea. And of course, economic folks would love it because we would call it an incentive. If you provide an incentive. Now, I do want to make a comment here. There are people that want to give because they want to give. And the incentive is just, hey, that's a benefit. But there are others that, of us that might say, well, you know, if I could do that too, why not take advantage of it? And that's the thing about the Montana Endowment Tax Credit is it really became an incentive for people to donate to an endowment. Yeah, it's and, great. It's, uh, it's, I like that. It's, you can eat, have your cake and eat it too, in a way. Uh, you can support. Uh, charities or nonprofits you're interested in and also take advantage of of an incentive. So, and because of that uh, credit, uh, more than 130 million has been gifted to Montana endowments over those years, uh, which is fantastic. Um, so for individuals, it's a credit versus a deduction. So if if you remember anything from your CPA or you took accounting 101, You'll remember credits are actually better than deductions because they're dollar for dollar off of your Montana tax bill. So, so let's say Champ owes uh, an income tax, a Montana income tax of nine thousand dollars. Let's say he sets up a deferred charitable gift annuity, and his calculation. We'll get that in a second. Uh, if the Montana down tax credit is thirty six hundred, he would reduce his tax liability to five thousand four hundred dollars. So if he wanted to, he could he could set up an annuity such that might eliminate all nine thousand dollars. So we have an now, you know, that's when it sounds too good to be true, Kevin, but I'm sure you're gonna tell us how that could happen. How, how in the heck does that work? Yes. Right, question. right. Yeah. And I I'm very impressed here. If I was champ, I would be just thrilled with this that uh, I could really save that much on taxes. So yep. tell us more about it. 
So how it works is it's 40% of the value of the plan gift, meaning we run a calculation um, based on the gift and the length of time, uh, and it's 40% of the federal deduction, so the charitable value. And we take that calculation, and that's up to $10,000. So that's why I said he could eliminate all 9,000. Um, so in Champ's case, he could do an annuity and play with some numbers and make a substantial gift and also eliminate up to $10,000 of his Montana tax bill. Well, I mean, this got me thinking, well, if I wanted to be clever, I would give a gift then every year, wouldn't I? To get That's that advantage, simple. possibly, yeah, if, if if I could. Now, I'm not saying I could, but what's a plan have, gift? Yeah, we have a number of donors that actually do that, Marcia. Um, so a plan gift, it's an irrevocable, uh, meaning once it's done, you can't change your mind. Uh, contribution to a permanent qualified endowment. So as I said, it's the Montana endowment tax credit. So that is an, a, an important term. So things like complex or capital projects, buildings, et cetera, uh, may not qualify. Um, whereas a endowed scholarship fund or an endowed program like 4-H um, certainly would. And it's uh, and it has to be held by an organization that qualifies under 501c3, so a nonprofit or a charity. So. Yeah, and isn't that 501c3 uh, sort of from the IRS code? That's our um, IRS yeah, and, nonprofit and any, designation, yes. Yeah, and any organization ought to know whether or not they're a 501c3, although I did find one in the state pre-COVID that was not sure if they were a 501 or a 506 or something. So some examples just quickly on those are things like charitable gift annuities, deferred charitable gift annuities, remainder trusts, uh, life estates, lead trusts. So you'll hear some of these terms and those are those are what we in the industry call planned gifts that qualify for the Montana endowment tax credit. So, so what is a permanent endowment? Um, again, it's held by a tax exempt 501c3 where the principal is not set. It's the interest earnings um, that are that are only used for that endowment um, or for the spending of that every year. Uh, so things like the, we could have endowments for current operations or scholarships, projects, programs, those types of things. So we do have some, we had MSU, we have some endowments that actually for our, for some of our buildings, they're capital improvement projects, but the actual construction of the building wouldn't be an endowment. Oh, and so, you know, when Champ and I were visiting, one of the things is, well, Kevin's taught, he talked about these tax exempt organizations. And what I found is, uh, as I travel the state, <laughs> there's a bunch, you know, you've got everything from the alumni foundation to the Montana forage foundation, uh, Alzheimer's, uh, association, Montana chapter. We've got the Montana community foundation. I even found there's a Montana nonprofit association, uh, Missoula Aging Services. My goodness, they've got quite a few programs over there. We've got Hopa Mountain. We've got Museum of the Rockies and even AARP Montana. They have a foundation that uh, can help with programming. So when I go out to give a program and I'm looking forward to doing that again, uh, I like to involve local nonprofits when I'm doing some examples in my programs. So I just go to this particular website and I say, okay, what are the nonprofits in Eureka? What are the nonprofits in Plentywood? And there's nonprofits, Kevin, I had, had never heard of before. And it's really neat when you find there's some of these out there that are just doing so many wonderful things for folks out there. Now, another thing that happened here um, tell me about this one, Kevin. You yeah, so, so if you file as an individual, as I mentioned, um, your maximum that you can use as a Montana down Cheshire is up to $10,000. Um, that you can't carry that forward, uh, any future year. So that's the year, uh, that you make that planned gift. But if you are filing, um, 
jointly, say as a married couple, you can double that. You can take up to twenty thousand dollars. So you know, and I've got a light bulb there above uh, Champ's head, and I bet you've given him an idea, haven't you? I think I have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've got Champ, and he's searching for a future Mrs. Champ in the Bridger Mountains near Bogusman, so he can receive a twenty thousand uh, dollar credit. Montana Endowment Tax. So we kind of call it METC for short, right? Yep. Did you want to cover this or did you want me to? You go ahead. Uh, there's even another. So for those of you that are businesses or business have an LLC, um, you can receive a 20% credit, again, up to $10,000. And that doesn't have to be a planned gift. That can be an outright gift uh, of cash um, yeah. or stock. Uh, so it's um, uh, it's another benefit. We actually had several years ago, we had a number of our uh, farmers across the state that took advantage of this because of their LLC status. Um, and it was very beneficial. They could support a cause they were very uh, passionate about and then also take advantage of the the Montana Endowment Tax Credit. Yeah, and I've heard there's uh, been some sole proprietorships at least have asked me some questions about it when I've been out uh, in the state. Yeah, so and Champ I wanted me to give him an example of what it would look like as a deferred gift annuity um, at $10,000. So let's say we established it at age 65 and we're gonna delay, meaning defer. We're gonna defer those payments for 15 years till the age he's 80. Um, and what would that look like? So we have some, some program to help us calculate all these things. And in this case, uh, his endowment tax credit would be $3,600. And of course, Champ uh, emulating Tony the Tiger says, that's great. So, <laughs> He's excited about, about that $3,600 credit. Um, so well, like, wait a minute, Kevin, if I was like champ and I wanted to calculate that myself, you know, let's yeah, say, yeah. Uh, well, how would I go about doing that? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you can visit our plangiving.msuaf.org and we'll have that site uh, here in the presentation later. Um, we have some calculate. We have some gift calculators. You can go on there. You can plug in different scenarios, different ages. Again, things change based on how long you defer the annuities um, and what rate you set it at. So we, when we're trying to maximize a Montana down tax credit, we put the lowest rate, which is five percent, and we put the longest time period, which is life expectancy. So you can go on our website again, plan giving. Dot msuaf dot org, and you can play with some of those things. Emily just put that in the in the chat, um, and play with some of those gift calculators and see what might might work. Yeah, it's amazing what we can do on the computers now. We don't have to right. do it with a hand calculator. <laughs> uh, maybe this is an opportunity to pause and ask Emily: Have we had any questions come up so far? We have had a couple. Um, so someone. Wanted us to repeat the information about itemized versus standard deduction, wondering whether um, was the twelve thousand one hundred dollars itemized deductions versus the option of a standardized deduction, or can you explain that a little bit more? Okay, when we're we're looking at the standard deduction, this is the one that you get automatically. You know, every year I say I save all my donations and employee expenses and all those kinds of things and i'm adding them up and you know so you have a decision are you going to itemize and if you're going to itemize you think that your amount is going to be above the standard deduction but the standard deduction you get just regardless even if you don't have all those things that we used to think about for itemizing so that's why Champ was saying, you know, there's no way I'm going to get 25,000 plus uh, in itemizing. So he's just going to take the standard deduction. And that is the difference there with between itemized and standard. 
Kevin, so, so, anything to add or Emily? Just a, just a couple things on that. Um, yeah, that was the, the standard deduction was increased quite a bit here a few years ago. Um, so that that actually the majority now of, of taxpayers on the federal side use the standard deduction. They no longer itemize, but but you might want to look because there are some cases, some individuals where they might take the standard deduction on their federal, but they actually itemize on their Montana tax return. So that may change champs may have changed champs situation. On his Montana. OK, so just to clarify. This, this person is asking about a single deduction. So the standard deduction for a single person is 12,550, right? Sure. And it's worth it to itemize unless the amount of itemized deductions you have are more than 12,550. Correct. It, it basically, yeah, it like, yeah, it's not worth it unless you, your, your deductions exceed that 12,550. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sometimes. Question. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. It was just another question. So if you had something else to add, go ahead. Okay. Well, um, like Kevin says that uh, you may not itemize on your federal, but you may want to on your Montana. And we have so many people that aren't doing their taxes anymore. And I was one of those. And I decided I needed to do my taxes just because I I would have a better understanding. And I'm going. Wait a minute. I should itemize if for no other reason because of health insurance premiums because Montana has a separate line for that and you know I'm just talking about health insurance premiums and also long-term care insurance and if you itemize just those two things uh, they are high enough that it's worth doing because if you look and this is complicated sometimes, but if you look at the health thing, you have to have either 7.5 or more for the federal percentage. Well, you don't have to do that for Montana when you're looking at long-term care insurance and health insurance. So I would assume that if the person that's working your taxes would ask you about that and, you know, maybe pull it out because it's really worth doing. And the same way with the Montana, um, medical care savings account. You get to subtract that on a separate type of thing. It's not the other. So Emily, next question. Okay, someone else was asking if the Montana Endowment Tax Credit was a one-time gift or if it could be a recurring gift. Like, could you get yeah, that? Great, here? great question. Uh, it's, it's per year, so, um, so it's up to ten thousand dollars per year, but you can do it year after year. Um, uh, if the question is uh, multiple gifts in a year, let's say I want to I want to do a deferred charitable gift annuity with Montana State University Alumni Foundation, another one with the Montana Community Foundation, you can do that. Your total then is still the ten thousand or the twenty thousand based on. Uh, but we, like I mentioned, we do have a number of of donors who they take advantage of this every year. Um, someone else is asking if I don't live in Montana, but I have a vacation home there. Can I take advantage of the endowment tax credit? If you pay Montana income tax, you can take advantage of it. If you don't, then sorry, you can't. So. Okay. Um. Okay, we have two more that came up. If I'm a business entity and because my gift can be cash or and not planned, can my gift be to a capital project or does it have to be to an endowment? Good question. So remember that E in the METC, it still has to be to an endowment. Um, so uh, it can't be to a capital project. It would have to be to like we had a Bobcat athletic complex that we're building right now. We had a number of donors. And so some of them wanted to take advantage of this. And what they've done is it goes to the athletic uh, facilities improvement fund, which is an endowment, which we'll get into a little bit in the next session about gift annuities and, but, uh, and also um, here in a few minutes, but it kind of delays it a little bit um, because you're putting it into endowment, like we said, um, but it still can be, Beneficial, so kind of weigh your 
benefit from your taxes versus the capital project kind of immediate need. So. Okay, so then we have one more question that actually is about a deferred gift annuity. Just asking if if we can describe a little bit how this works and maybe you're going to talk about it in a second, but they're wondering if that yeah. fixed annuity payments to the donor. That's great. Um, yeah, we, yeah, we will get a little bit into that and then also I encourage you to join our session next week. You know, put a little plug in because it's all about charitable gift annuities uh, next Thursday. So we'll learn even more. I don't know, Marcia, do you want me to. To go on and talk about that or basically. The, to quickly answer that is yes, because the term annuity means it's a fixed payment. So based on based on your age, how far you defer it, um, there's several calculations based on the the American Association of Charitable Gift Annuities um, and their their recommended rates. Um, and then we give you how much that rate is um, based on whether it's an immediate annuity or deferred and for how long and those types of things. Hopefully that answered the question. And we'll have a couple of examples here as we move along. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is a uh, champ uh, talking about how if he, you know, gives the 10,000, but he saves $3,600. And this was a concept seemed like it took me forever to understand is really the cost of the gift is only $6,400. Because Champ would have had to pay out three thousand six hundred in taxes anyway. So what did Champ ask then, Kevin? So he was excited. He was like, "Does this really mean I get to direct my income tax dollars to the MSU Alumni Foundation for the benefit of MSU Extension and Montana 4-H program?" And what did we all say? Yes. Yes, you can, Champ. <laughs> Emily, we didn't hear you. Let's try it again. Is Champ going yes. to be good with this? Yes. 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 Okay, Sorry. there we go. Forgot okay. to unmute myself. <laughs> Welcome so, to the club. So his conclusion is yes, that he can there are substantial tax savings when making a gift while he's alive, uh, with a deferred gift annuity in this case, uh, and taking advantage of that. So like the good Good Bobcat that he is, he's saying, sweet, I can, I can do this. So, so here's an example, Rene, if you recall, he established this when he was 65. So we're deferring it uh, for 15 years. So he is going to get, he's going to receive a payment then at that point, and when he turns 80, for as long as he lives. And that, that gift calculation, again, that I did it really quickly yesterday in that scenario, he could get about a 13% annuity. Um, so that's pretty good um, for the rest of his life. Uh, and again, like I said, here next week, we'll go into more detail about annuities and show you some gift calculations and those types of things. So. Okay, now Kevin, when you say this 13%, uh, that would be like an annual percentage rate that he's getting? On so his... in that case, he made a $10,000 gift, right? So 13% okay. would be a $1,300 annual payment. So that he would get for the rest of his life in that quick. That in his case, so again, I, it all depends on age, life expectancy, how far you're deferring kind of when you want to begin those taking those payments. So, even if he lives to be 105, right. uh, you're going to still pay, right? Correct. The, and that's, uh, that's. Guaranteed by the assets of, in our case, our foundation. So, ah. but there's more. So let's say Champ just, he's like a lot of our donors. He's just, he really wants to maximize his tax savings, but he wants to make that gift quicker, if you will. He wants those funds to go help 4 H and Montana State University Extension. So after five years, the rule in Montana with the METC. Is you can relinquish your gift annuity to the MSU Alumni, Alumni Foundation, and then in his case, for the benefit of MSU Extension and Montana 4 H program. So you've heard okay, me now, say, What does relinquish mean, Kevin? Relinquish. That's such a. Does it mean it's, give it back or what? 
It does. It means surrender. It means give up. It means, you know what? I said I wanted to take a payment, right? I wanted to take that $1,300 when I was 80 years old. But now after five years, he's going, I don't need that. I don't want that that payment. I want I want that 10,000 or 10,000, whatever it's growing to, to go to MSU Extension in Montana 4 H. I want it to go to them after five years. So that's what relinquish means, or we use relinquish or surrender um, your annuity. It's basically saying, I don't intend to ever take the income. Well, I can understand why. If he had that really $5 million, he probably wouldn't <laughs> need it. So he can just say, hey, I'm going to give it back, so to speak. Right. So he's excited. Eureka, Champ is eligible for additional Montana income tax savings. Again, you've heard me say Champ's probably going to become like many of our donors where they're going to establish some charitable gift annuity or deferred charitable gift annuities to maximize their Montana endowment tax credit. And then they're going to get in a cycle where they start relinquishing or surrendering them um, and, uh, and benefit the charity and also benefit uh, him and his tax name. So which option would you advise him to select? Don't forget his legacy goals. Remember, he wants to support extension in the 4-H and he wants to minimize those state and federal taxes. So we got another poll coming up. This one should be fun. Hopefully all of you, uh, you select. Like, you might have some Grizzlies in the group. I don't know. You might want to take that last option, but would he, should he do, or would you advise him to make a $10,000 cash gift or do a $10,000 deferred gift annuity? Keep the 10,000, put it in savings, earning 0.202% <laughs> annually. Hey, Seriously, that's what I'm getting, that really, it's exciting. Oh is that my. really what it is? Yeah. <laughs> so, or, you know, if he was really feeling generous, he could help his friend Monty out over at the University of Montana and just give him Boo. Money to you. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if anybody answers that. Well, we, we yeah. Won't. <laughs> I guess somebody will. I usually have one in every crowd. That's hey, that's good. <laughs> we, we're equal opportunity. So. Right. <laughs> so don't forget to hit the submit button. All right. So you got. Results coming in. So we don't have anybody. Yeah, that's more than one. <laughs> yep, yeah. there's one in every crowd. I said there's one. All right, good. You're keeping your 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 quota. Uh, so most people, sixty one percent, are recommending the ten thousand dollar deferred gift annuity. Um, and yep, one person saying, "Ah, let's give it to Monty over at Uville." Mm -hmm. So champ, what does he do? He tells president Cruzado, he's excited. I want to, to make do a $10,000 deferred gift annuity. She gratefully accepts that. And we're going to benefit MSU extension in Montana 4 H program. So there's champ jumping for joy because of all those tax savings he's enjoying because of our Montana down tax credit. And again, our, our singing pentiments that I, are they going to sing this time, Marsha? No, oh, I wish they could. <laughs> we just couldn't figure out how to get them to sound right. I could hear it just fine. So I thought, yay, we got it. And when we're practicing, Kevin and Emily said, delete, delete, because it was delete. coming across cracky. But I got to tell you. At one of the meetings that I was doing pre-COVID, uh, I actually had one of the former cheerleaders of MSU. And when I started playing that music, she jumped up and she was just doing all, everything that she did as a cheerleader. And it, we yeah. all loved that because it was See, kind it's of too fun. bad because for the grizzly in the group, it was the it was the Bobcat fight song. Dang it. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, can you imagine? I actually did a program in uh, Missoula. And I should have guessed something because everybody had on this weird color of purple. I think it's burgundy <laughs> and yellow. And, you know, I'm just going along and I go, right, they're going to hassle me because I'm really talking a lot about Montana State. But I was brave. I survived. They enjoyed yes, it. Right. We all had a good time with it. <laughs> 
Good. That's good. Well, speaking of a good time, it just seems like, as usual, time has slipped away with our programs. And uh, I hope that we steered folks towards the idea that they could create a living legacy. You know, that we can save some income taxes in this day and age if we don't have inheritance in the federal estate tax to pay. We might as well establish a living legacy if we can. And one of those ways that you can do that is a charitable gift annuity. And for some of you, this would help you achieve some of your legacy planning goals. That would be good. And we've reminded you, if you don't have a memory like the elephant's head, and yeah, I hope some of you have a chance to see this flower this summer because there's the ears and there's the trunk. They're pretty, really. We've got 47 different monk guides. Uh, these are our fact sheets available from MSU Extension. So if you go to our website there, what I've done is listed, what Carrie has done is listed all of those that you can click on and either print it out or order it from our Extension Publications Office. And uh, locally, there are Extension offices in your community. And so take advantage there too. Ah, oh, Kevin, you, don't you have some things as well? Yeah, we do. Um, so we have our, our will and estate planning guide. Um, we also have a fact sheet on the Montana's endowment tax credit. We have, we have uh, handouts, uh, sheets on, on all of our different uh, plan gift types. Uh, so remainder trust annuities, et cetera. Um, our website, again, that's our main msuaf.org website. Uh, you can get there as well, um, but it's also, as Emily put in, if you just want to jump right to our planned giving site, it's plangiving.msuaf.org. So. Okay, and just as a refresher, that's where I can go if I want to calculate uh, what the endowment tax credit would be for me with my age and yep. the amount that I think I want to give as a gift. Is there a, a smallest amount that I could give? You know, good. like 5,000? <laughs> good 5, question. 000. Yes, good question. Uh, many charities have, um, and again, we'll get into this a little more detail next week, but um, many charities have minimums. We do. Uh, are If you haven't established an annuity with us, it's ten. the minimum is 10,000. If you already have one, like several of our donors, then the minimum is five thousand. So we give you kind of an incentive to uh, to do future uh, charitable gift annuities with us. Mm -hmm. There's okay. also some minimum ages. Um, so if I'm a forty year old, uh, or in my case, um, almost fifty, um, I can't do an immediate annuity, meaning I can't begin my payments now. I would have to defer it until at least sixty five. So we have we have some minimum ages at when we will begin making payments to those individuals and most most charities have some of those minimums so you may want to to check in and if you have trouble or questions with the um uh the website or the calculator's not quite working i'm happy to help you my colleague tracy weller is happy to help you we run illustrations for lots of folks um we work we actually do work closely with with the other charities and including the University of Montana Foundation. So even if you are the Grizz in the group, but you have a question, don't hesitate to, to give me a call. I'm happy to help. Yeah. And, uh, the benefit of charity. and I do feel a lot of the foundations are together on these kinds of things, like the Montana Community Foundation. You know, they say, we'll run an example for you. And it doesn't matter at all uh, where you're wanting to put that money. And we also have foundations like the Central Montana Foundation. They may have some additional name. Very big organization. But what it does is help with the smaller communities that are around that area. And they manage the funds. And then they're able to give them out to communities to you know, build a swimming pool, do this or that, which is really neat of giving back to your own community as well as you know, we all have an association with MSU, you know, after 40 years, I think I would. 
So we really have appreciated your participation in our webinars and especially today. And we're going to see you. And I say May. No, no, no. It should be yeah, May six. six. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have right. something going. Kevin is putting together this fabulous program on the charitable gift annuity with a lot more detail in there that I think will help you understand better, or at least it helped me understand better how these these things work because. If you're hearing about one for the first time, you kind of look at it and think, you know, there's just something yeah. kind of yeah. screwy about it. But it's not. It's been out there and it's a great, great tool. Uh, oh, this one, I got it right. Uh, <laughs> this shows you what it is. So that's good. And, you know, President Cruzado, when she goes out to give a presentation, she always talk, it says, go, cats, go. So what we decided is today we're going to copy cats, <clears throat> what she does, and say, okay, Kevin and Emily, Emily, let's do it. Let's do it. Go, go cats. cats go. Go. Okay. And not quite together, but you get the hint there. Okay. So, Emily, uh, do we have some additional questions that people have had? Yes, we had a couple more that came up. Um, someone asked if the tax credit is in the year that you make the deferred gift. Good question. Yes. So, uh, so if you make the gift or establish the plan gift uh, in 2021, the Tax credit is for your 21, 2021 Montana tax bill. And Kevin, if I was going to do this to get credit for 2021, uh, can I wait till December 15th or something? Uh, you, you can, uh, you can wait till December 31st. Uh, because we're dealing with uh, planned gifts, so there's some additional work involved with the illustrations and the contract for the annuity, the deferred gift annuities. We really appreciate it if you give us a little more warning. Uh, we do get fairly busy in the month of December, but we also know that a lot of folks are waiting until their tax planning to and talking with their accountants to figure out in December what what is their potential tax liability and how how gifting could help, but the earlier warning you can give us is much appreciated, but yep, right up until uh, December 31st, uh, as long as that gift is made, meaning it was postmarked if it's a cash or check, or if it's in hand, or when you're talking about stock, um, the transfer actually has to be accepted. It can't be the transfer order. So if you're financial planner or financial institution, if you're transferring stock, if it takes a couple of days to transfer that stock, uh, it's when it actually leaves the, the financial institution is received by the charity. So that's something else to consider at the end of the year tax planning hmm. or gifting. Okay, and then someone else asked um, about the planned giving tool link. Is that just the planned giving .org? Yeah, that that has all, all of our information it's got some resources it's got gift ideas got different information about the different types of of bequests or trusts or annuities life insurance etc and then within that website there's the the gift calculator okay um someone else is asking can i choose a beneficiary in case I do not live long enough to receive the annual annuity payments? Ah, good question. So you're leading into next week. This is great. Uh, charitable gift annuities um, are for individuals or individual on your spouse. So they can be two people, um, two lives, if you will, but it has to be spouse. If you wanted it, to go to a, a separate beneficiary, you would have to act, actually establish an annuity with them being the beneficiary. So unfortunately, um, the short answer is no, you can't name an additional beneficiary on a charitable gift annuity, unless it's your spouse. Maybe the Maybe. person is thinking about a charitable remainder trust. <laughs> yeah, maybe. And that's gonna be the last session, right? Yes. Yeah. yes. They, or is that, that called the Give It Twice Trust? 
Yeah, that, that's okay. one of the terms they give it twice. Uh, charitable remainder trust. Again, we have more information that does have the flexibility of you to receive the income and then for a term of years provide additional beneficiaries uh, of your choosing the income. So trusts have a little other flexibility than annuities. do. And so then when that person or you can give it for a certain number of of years to your beneficiary, so to speak, and then then it goes to the charity. Do I have yeah, that so short, in, right? Yep. So in short, in summary, what let's say I set up a charitable remainder trust. It's going to pay myself and my spouse for our lives, and then after we pass we pass away for let's say twenty years, it will pay my two sons. And then when my son, after that term of years, uh, or if they pass away before the term of years. Then the remainder comes to the charity for whatever I and or my spouse have designated are we what we want to support. So um, that's the that's the flexibility. That's kind of that that give it twice. You can give it give the income, give it to yourself and your family, and then you ultimately give it to the charity that you're interested in. So yeah, join us on May 13th. There's we'll have much more information on. Charitable and inner trusts also. Yeah. Okay. I haven't seen any other questions come up, so I think we we got them all done for today. Um, for the folks who are still on, I posted the links to the resources for this week's webinar, which has information from MSU Extension and the Alumni Foundation. Um, and then I also posted the link to the recordings for the past webinars in case you missed the last couple of weeks and want to catch up on those. Good, Good idea. Great. Okay, thank you everybody. Okay, well, nice. yeah, we all had a great time today. Hope you enjoyed the presentation and we look forward to seeing you on the May 6th where we'll get into a little deeper dive on some of this information. So until then, be safe and make sure you keep healthy. Yeah. Bye.